Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture on interceptive orthodontics. This would be a short lecture covering a part of the domain of interceptive orthodontics, which itself is a quite a big one. And we are going to take up one topic from this and discuss this in further. So let's start. At the end of the lecture, you will be able to differentiate between the preventive, interceptive and corrective orthodontics, which are the three uh, main domains in orthodontics. And for pediatric dentistry, we are more into preventive and interceptive. Of course, there will be an overlap with, uh, the, uh, with the orthodontics in terms of uh, implementation of preventive interceptive orthodontics. We are uh, going to describe anterior crossbite. We have selected this for this lecture because this is something that uh, uh, general dental practitioners can identify very easily and correct this uh, malocclusion as soon as it starts to appear with very very good results so you can really help the child uh, by identifying and correcting this malocclusion so we will discuss uh, the causes of the anterior crossbite and we will plan the management of an uncomplicated uh, anterior crossbite and we are going to look at different treatment options uh, to uh, correct this anterior crossbite okay so let's dive in First thing first, we must understand the differences between preventive, interceptive and corrective orthodontics. Uh, these are the three main domains uh, in orthodontics and of course uh, the specialists are more into all of these three domains and more so in corrective orthodontics. For us, from pediatric dentistry point of view, we will be doing preventive orthodontics and we will be doing some part of interceptive orthodontics. So the time of intervention is uh, what decides what kind which domain you are taking up for treatment for example you look at mal occlusion so if the mal occlusion has not presented itself yet right then we are dealing with preventive orthodontics and we are trying to prevent a development of mal occlusion when the mal occlusion has not even started to develop so this is preventive orthodontics a typical example is space maintainer so if you see uh, in this picture here the primary molars first molar and primary second molar were, um, were lost prematurely and after that this device was put if you can identify this device is a space maintainer so this device was put in place to avoid the drift of the uh, permanent first molar that is this tooth mesially okay taking the support of this primary canine so this tooth could not move mesially and therefore the space for the erupting premolar that you see here was preserved conserved and the premolars could erupt in their uh, in the spaces that they uh, spaces that the primary molars had uh, kept for them so this particular scenario of space maintainer is a very good example of preventive orthodontics so we have prevented the migration of the molars measly and space closure now next is the interceptive orthodontics interceptive orthodontics is where the malocclusion has just begun Right? And then we intercept this uh, malocclusion and correct it uh, ASAP, that is as soon as possible. So now in the same example that we are looking here, if this space maintainer was not put in place, then the molars would have restricted measly blocking the space. Now if the patient comes to you and you realize that the molars have drifted measly and there will be space discrepancy, then you follow this picture. Can you see this? This is a typical space maintainer with a open coiled uh, spring in this case so what is happening is this premolar which you see is trying to erupt so this molar has drifted mesially blocking the space for the eruption of the premolar and using this open coil what is called as space regainer we are trying to push the molars distally so that the premolar can erupt in its proper place so here we are uh, intervening in the uh, developing malocclusion so this is this would be the interceptive orthodontics the domain of interceptive orthodontics now in the corrective orthodontics you will find so many times you see this here the crossbite uh, this uh, the tooth is out of alignment it is the uh, it is out of the alignment of the arch now if this is completely established right it's not developing anymore the malocclusion has already been established then we cannot do anything we have to go for fish, fixed orthodontic therapy that is the treatment with uh, commonly referred to as braces and what we call as fixed orthodontic therapy and uh, you can have orthodontic surgery also as uh, your corrective orthodontic so it's very important for us to differentiate between these 
uh, three domains so that we what we uh, we know what we are doing when we are treating the child okay now here's a question at you right have you seen this appliance before how would you classify this appliance as a preventive orthodontic appliance or an interceptive orthodontic appliance or a corrective orthodontic appliance okay now i'll give you five seconds to think and then i'm gonna give you the answer okay so this is what you would call as the lingual retainer that is a permanent retainer that we place lingual to the mandibular central incisors to prevent relapse of rotations of movement of these teeth so if you consider this would be a preventive orthodontic treatment because we are trying to prevent malocclusion from developing by preventing the relapse of the orthodontic treatment okay so here this is uh, something to check whether you have understood the concept in terms of whether the malocclusion has appeared or has just appeared or the malocclusion has been established okay so let's move on okay so when we come to the concept of cross bite as the name indicates the bite is not normal it is crossed so what it means here is the normal bite would be like this the maxillary teeth would be over the maxillary teeth sorry about that some pressed some button here and there the maxillary teeth would be overlapping the mandibular teeth always look at this, this is maxillary teeth overlapping the mandibular teeth maxillary teeth overlapping the mandibular teeth maxillary teeth overlapping the mandibular teeth uh, or oh, something is wrong here this tooth was supposed to overlap this tooth the mandibular tooth so this condition is called as a cross bite okay now this cross bite situation can be either skeletal that is related to the basal bone that is the maxilla and the mandible or it could be dental that means only one tooth is in cross bite so it is not the problem of a skeletal origin it is a problem of dental origin it could be an anterior tooth or a posterior tooth so posterior would be here anterior would be anterior to the mesial to the canine and it could be unilateral or bilateral so if i were to ask you to classify this particular anterior bite anterior cross bite what would be your answer so your answer should be it could be skeletal or dental more likely to be dental because it is a single tooth and it is an anterior and unilateral bilateral i cannot tell you sir because i am seeing only one half of the picture okay so this is the kind of answer i expect from you when i have asked you a question especially where i don't give you full information so you have to ask for information right that tells me that you are attentive and you're trying to understand all right so after this classification let's move on and we're going to look at the cons the anterior cross bite in particular all right because uh, this kind of teeth that you see in the picture here it's distressing for the parents and they see the child with something which is not looking normal and this is the time they bring the child to the dentist for an opinion so this is a very common um, complaint uh, among the parents when they see this in the children so you must be able to recognize this so if i were to ask you how would you uh, clean what, what would be your clinical diagnosis for this so you have to tell me sir this is a single tooth cross bite of course again i don't have the pictures for the posterior tooth so i cannot expect the full answer but this this is a case of cross bite so one thing you need to understand is that if you have a segmental occurrence of the cross bite that means the whole anterior region is in cross bite so canine to canine is in cross bite then the likely it is a skeletal problem or if one isolated or two teeth at the most are in cross bite it is more of the dental origin so dental origin means the alignment of the teeth is a problem okay it's not the bone so this is uh, the kind of two things you must uh, bear in mind to quickly decide the problem as skeletal or dental now we need to intercept this cross bite and especially anterior cross bite very early because of uh, three reasons one is when the tooth goes into the cross bite the space that was supposed to be occupied by the tooth closes by the drifting of the adjacent teeth right so this tooth may drift distally the tooth if it was in the mesial side would drift distally and the space will close and the arch length will narrow or will become shortened and which will cause more crowding the other one that you see is the traumatic occlusion so now this tooth this anterior tooth is not supposed to be in 
contact with this maxillary tooth, right? So we have normal overjet or overbite. Now in this case, this tooth is constantly touching the mandibular incisor, and this puts this mandibular incisor into a traumatic occlusion, and the signs of traumatic occlusion will be a gingival recession in only one particular tooth. So you'll see gingival recession here, which will indicate a traumatic bite, or you can have a deep periodontal pocket because of loss of uh, bone support because of the forces that are not supposed to be generated on that particular tooth. So this would be a problem. And then of course, lastly, you will have weir facet on the teeth. So you'll see that distal to uh, the incisal edge of the permanent tooth will have weir facet. That means that part of the tooth which is touching, the other tooth will wear off and then you can clearly make out that there is loss of tooth structure. Now, when you find a case of uh, anterior crossbite, you need to investigate for the reason. Why? Because if you understand the reason, you will have a better diagnosis and a better treatment plan. So if you find a tooth that is in crossbite, you must first investigate for labially positioned supernumerary tooth. Sometimes it can happen that supernumerary teeth are there, right? Just like this one. And because they are blocking the eruption pathway of the permanent tooth, the permanent tooth will erupt in a crossbite. Okay, so it's a very, very common problem, labially positioned supernumerary tooth. Or you can have a history of trauma to the primary incisors where they have been intruded because of the trauma and the intrusion of the primary has deflected the eruption pathway of the permanent can cause uh, anterior crossbite too. And then lastly, you can have tooth size, jaw size discrepancy. That means the jaw is not enough to accommodate the teeth. All right, so you can have uh, tooth size, jaw size discrepancy, where the size of the jaw is uh, not enough to accommodate all the tooth that is present uh, in that particular jaw. So some of the tooth will find space by erupting in a cross bite, that means erupting in the, uh, when you say maxillary, it will erupt more palatally, just like this one. And then of course you can have this kind of a situation where you can have an over retained primary deciduous teeth Okay, most commonly these teeth could have been treated by pulpectomy and the roots have not resolved or these tooth have undergone necrosis because of caries and the roots have not resolved and so they have not exfoliated and they are now an obstacle in the eruption path of the permanent and the permanent will erupt in the cross bite. So this situation you can have in maxillary arch as well. So uh, let's keep all this to what to investigate for in a case of anterior cross bite. Then we come to, we have to decide now whether if uh, the crossbite that we see is a complicated crossbite or an uncomplicated crossbite. So when I say complicated crossbite, that means there is other problems associated with the anterior crossbite. So there may be a rotated teeth, there may be another crossbite in the posterior region, there will be uh, a discrepancy or disturbance in the growth of the alveolar process. There could be a problem with the skeletal uh, origin. So these are uh, multiple problems. Uh, if there is, then it becomes a complicated case and it really uh, is not uh, prudent to for a general dental practitioner to uh, try to manage these cases. It is best referred for a specialist. But uncomplicated cases, yes, they fall in the domain of general dental practice. And as a general dental practitioner, you must be able to manage these cases. So what are the features of an uncomplicated anterior crossbite? I mean, how do you know that I can do this and I'm not supposed to do this? Okay, so here I have listed for you the uh, features of uncomplicated crossbite. Okay, the features of uncomplicated anterior crossbite. So space required should be equal to space present. That means the two that is in the crossbite, if you push it into the normal occlusion, there must be enough space for the tooth to be pushed. So if there is a crowding and the, the tooth is cannot be pushed labially because there is no space, that means it is a complicated uh, anterior crossbite and we should not touch it. Then the deflection of the tooth around the apical portion of the root. That means if you see in this picture here, the tooth if pushed from the label side, will the deflection is minimal, then we can go call it as an uncomplicated anterior crossbite and all we need to do is tip the tooth a little and the crossbite will be relieved. So there's no deflection, much deflection of the tooth around the apical portion. So this also must be there. So you must uh, take a uh, radiograph and uh, especially the 
lateral step to see where the roots are and the, where the roots will be after the correction so if the deflection is too much that means more bodily movement is required then better not uh, uh, take up such cases and refer to a specialist for a more in-depth uh, uh, analysis and assessment of the condition the last one is a class 1 molar relationship and the canine relationship in the permanent dentition or a normal occlusion in the mixed dentition so this would tell you that the problem is isolated and isolated problems can be solved very easily and uh, if there is a complicated uh, or multiple problems then better not do it if you have a class 3 molar relationship with the class 3 canine relationship that is uh, way will be very difficult to manage uh, at a general dental practitioner's level and it will cause frustration for the general dental practitioners and for the patient it will be a waste of time and then of course your reputation will be affected by this so uh, learn how to identify the features of an uncomplicated anterior cross bite and then with confidence go and manage it so once you have decided that you can manage a particular case of uh, anterior cross bite uh, what are the factors which will influence the choice of uh, appliance and the management approach so what you need to do is you have to first look at the patient's cooperation okay okay so factors to include or to consider would be the patient cooperation not even patient cooperation but even uh, the parents cooperation or how willing are they uh, to correct this interceptive malocclusion of anterior or, or open bite, uh, anterior cross bite, I'm so sorry, anterior cross bite. So patient cooperation is very important. Does the patient understand what treatment has to be done and what is his part in the treatment? So if the patient cannot understand, it will be a little difficult and then you will have to change the choice of appliance. Then we have the uh, anticipated degree of overbite after the correction. Now, since we are looking at the maxillary central incisors or lateral incisors to be in the cross bite so when we correct the cross bite uh, the anterior cross bite uh, there should be some degree of overbite also that is one to two millimeters right so you have to think in those terms also that after you do the correction what would be the remaining overbite so that is one then you have uh, sometimes you have to do over correction so that when the bite settles down the overbite comes to one to two millimeters so this again you need to consider the third one that you the factor that you need to consider is the stage of development of occlusion okay so whether the child is in um, mixed dentition late mixed dentition early mixed dentition or in the permanent dentition which is the uh, stage of development of occlusion because so many teeth would be erupting and they will be causing uh, pressure on the adjacent teeth and pushing the adjacent teeth the early mesial shift the late mesial shift so you need to take into consideration all that when you're trying to see how much space is available and how much space is required. Lastly, you have to come to the sequence of tooth eruption. So we have to look at which is the next tooth to erupt and whether this eruption would have any consequences on the space that is available. So this four factors you need to consider uh, before you plan out your management approach or even select an appliance. So basically there are three uh, main management options which are tongue blade therapy for very minimal uh, or very uh, small anterior cross bite correction that means the cross bite has just begun then you can use tongue blade then you have lower cemented bite plane this is used when the uh, cross bite is more established and then palatal appliances when it is like you know uh, completely established so depending on how much is the cross bite, we can choose these uh, management options. So let's look at the first one where the cross bite is, uh, is minimal. So if you see here, this particular tooth is just in cross bite and we need uh, to tip this tooth by just a little to correct the cross bite. So here we can safely use the tongue blade therapy. So what it does is, is basically uses a tongue blade now tongue blade uh, wooden tongue blades are very uh, difficult to find you will find it at the doctor's office and then the doctors use it to check your tonsils so uh, you cannot find them easily you can use ice cream sticks that is very very common to find that wooden ice cream sticks especially uh, ones like this and you can uh, put a rubber band and take two sticks uh, together and try to push this uh, tooth which is called as in lock tooth uh, outside so how you do it is basically is you put your uh, tongue blade that is your wooden uh, tongue uh, 
sticks, uh, wooden uh, sticks, which would be an ice cream sticks uh, to the palatal surface of the tooth that is in lock and using chin as a fulcrum, right? You try to push this inward so that the forces from the tongue blade will be applied to the tooth in this outward direction, okay? And this hopefully will tip the tooth into uh, the correct occlusion. That means the tooth will be tipped labially and it will be relieved of the cross bite. So as soon as the tooth crosses the incisal edge of the mandible incisors, we should uh, stop the therapy. So for this case, we need to have uh, first a minimal degree of cross bite because we cannot tip the tooth a lot with this, just a minor tip we can. And therefore the patient's cooperation, the parent's cooperation is very important. The reason being that this exercise has to be done five minutes each hour for as many hours in 24 hours, right? So in a day, it has to be at least uh, done eight to nine hours and five minutes in each hour, like 40, 50 times in a day, then only the tooth would move. And of course, the depending on how much uh, pressure you're applying and how much force you're applying, it differs from patient to patient and the results are not very uh, conclusive, okay? So they may lead to frustration for the child also, for the doctor also. For the parent also like why the tooth is not moving essentially if they're not doing it correctly so for very minimal correction you the first step could be this try this for a very cooperative uh, parent and a child and this definitely works if this does not work we have something called as lower cemented bite plane and it is also called as catalan's appliance so if you see here this is the catalan's appliance now what is uh, how this is made is by uh, using a stone model as you see here so you take a alginate impression you pour a uh, study model okay and on the study model you use a self cure acrylic okay that is cold cure acrylic okay and then you try to cover the lower incisors from canine to canine depending on how much correction has to be made and then you have to raise this tab okay, on the lingual surfaces of the central incisors, mandibular central incisors, where the maxillary, you see here in this picture, this is the cross bite, and this is the lower cemented bite plane, or the Catalan's appliance, which is cemented. So you see this projection. Now this is a projection, which will touch the incisal edge of the maxillary incisor. And whenever the child closes, uh, uh, brings the teeth in occlusion, this incisor and this bite plane will touch and this angulation has to be approximately 40 degrees right so this 40 degrees angulation will cause a force vector in this direction in a horizontal direction and with use of about seven days right the tooth will move from the cross bite situation to more of edge to edge bite and with continuous use it will just cross the edge of the central incisor mandible central incisor and at that point, you should remove the uh, bite plane, okay, or the catalan's appliance. Now, normally, once the upper and the lower two touches in this stage, the posterior teeth will have a distance of two to three millimeters. That means every time the child will try to bite, he will be biting on this bite plane, and his posterior teeth will not be touching at all. So, a lot of force will be exerted on the uh, maxillary central incisors, and this angulation of 45 degrees to the long axis of the uh, the long axis of the tooth will cause the horizontal vector and this will push the tooth out so this is the concept of lower cemented bite plane and this is how it is it looks like constructed with this tab now this tab it should be just long enough to touch or be two millimeters beyond the incisal edge it should never touch the palatal surface or the maxillary arch okay so this thing uh, you need to uh, keep in mind of course the 45 degrees plane i'm talking about is according to the long axis of the lower incisors long axis of the lower incisors it should be for the inclined plane should be inclined 45 degrees right okay then once the tooth has been corrected as soon as the tooth passes over the incisal edge of the mandible incisors you must remove this inclined plane now because the posterior teeth will not be in bite in occlusion for seven days they might supra erupt okay so this is one of those uh, 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 effects that will happen because of the bite plate and therefore you should not use this bite plate for more than seven to ten days so if the bite is not getting corrected 
in seven to ten days you better switch to another appliance okay now this appliance like i told you if the severity of crossbite is from uh, mild to moderate this is a very good appliance to work with uh, no patient cooperation required because this appliance will be uh, cemented on the lower incisors okay using your glass inuma looting cement and they will be cemented so they will not come off until you have to basically cut them out and then remove remove the uh, appliance the catalan appliance so this is lower cemented bite plane the third in this case also you see here is, is a bite plate to relieve the interlocking so that the tooth can move uh, throughout the day the forces can be applied throughout the day and the tooth will move so here we have seen the use of a jack uh, screw to move out so this is a central incisor that has to be moved in the uh, label direction can you see here the gingival stripping can you see the gingival stripping can you see this tooth is caused a gingival stripping this is a gingival recession this is the level of the gingiva in the normal occlusion see here this one has recessed so okay so this is this tooth is experiencing a traumatic occlusion then you have uh, other modalities of correction you can basically use uh, invisalign we can use uh, your clear uh, aligners these are uh, aligners and you can use the aligners with selective grinding to move the tooth out so in this particular case you have the cent uh, central incisors in cross bite and then using the clear aligners you can move it uh, labially so this is another a way of doing it so what i'm trying to tell you here is that uh, you can have multiple solutions to one problem okay so you have to see the solution that you are comfortable and the treatment outcome should be uh, predicted that uh, this is going to work this is not going to work so you can, you can select any appliances any uh, solution to the problem all right now this is another one where the author is trying to correct uh, the malocclusion or the cross bite which is very well established right Uh, with these two central incisors so they have put in a jack screw with uh, a finger spring right so if you see the finger spring in action here they trying to bring the tooth back towards the center trying to close this die schema as well as the jack screw will be trying to push the tooth out labially with the posterior bite plate you can see here the posterior bite plate and the uh, items clasped and you are achieving two tooth movement at the same time one is the labial movement of the central incisors and then one is the closure or the die schema all happening in the same uh, appliance so you can have uh, multiple things going on in the same appliance okay so here i would like you to identify what treatment has been done i'll give you 5 minutes to think 5 uh, seconds to think over it and then tell me uh, what is this treatment or what treatment has been done here okay so we see here that this particular central incisor is in cross bite and we have something which is cemented on the lower incisors and this has caused correction of the cross bite so this has to be a lower cemented bite plane or a catalan appliance okay those who have got it well done those who have not got it it's okay the more cases you see the more pictures you will see you will uh, get it right uh, this is anti cross bite pathways of care i have pulled this out from uh, uh, textbook of orthodontics by profit and uh, he has very nicely given this uh, pathway of care on what you have to do and what you don't have to do of course this is uh, the complete uh, management tree for anti cross bite if it is skeletal or dental and but for us it is a very good uh, way to understand the treatment options that are available maybe you cannot do the treatment option uh, by yourself but you will be able to explain to the parent what uh, can be done and what cannot be done so this improves your uh, uh, reputation as a knowledgeable dentist and of course when you refer the case to an orthodontist the orthodontist also understands that the case is coming from a knowledgeable dentist okay so this uh, is uh, something that i wanted to share with you uh, lastly the i want you all to Uh, take some time to read uh, the chapter number 11 of uh, the textbook that i just mentioned contemporary orthodontics fifth edition by william prophet right 
and uh, in that chapter you will find everything uh, about uh, interceptive orthodontics especially the anterior crossbite that we have discussed which will give you a more in-depth uh, knowledge of what we have discussed okay and uh, to uh, sign off this uh, lecture session uh, i would like you to spend you know, five minutes to just to gather what we have discussed today like the etiology, the causes, the complicated anterior bite, the uncomplicated anterior bite, the consequences of uh, not correcting an anterior bite early. Okay, just try to remember the main headings. Okay, don't try to focus on remembering everything. Just try to remember the main headings. And if you're just able to recapitulate the main headings, then I think you will be okay today. And then you can go back again and refresh, uh, read Pro William Prophet and come back to this lecture again. And then you will understand it even much better. Okay, so that's it from me. And uh, till I see you uh, next time, okay, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.